Today we're going to talk about the angles of a polygon. A polygon is a figure that has three or more sides and the number of sides determines the name. Just a refresher for polygons, there are a few characteristics that we want to make sure we remind ourselves of. One, they are made up of straight lines. All the sides are straight lines, there are no curves. Second, each of the polygons are closed figures which means they come to a complete closure and close in the shape um, which is creating our vertex points, our vertices, um, or our edges um, and they do not um, have an opening someplace in them. And lastly, there is no crisscross of our sides. All of our sides stay away from each other except where they meet the next uh, side. They do not cross each other like you can see on that last shape all the way to the right. So just make sure we understand a polygon versus non-polygons. We also want to remember how we classify these polygons. We said that we do it by the sides, and there are a few of them that we should certainly know. The triangle, which means three-sided. The quadrilateral, which means four-sided. Penta, pentagon, is a five-sided shape. Hexa means six. Hepta means seven. Octa means eight. So the octagon as an eight-sided polygon. Another common one is the decagon. Deca, which is the prefix for the ten-sided polygon, we see in the world decimals when we deal with um, place values of tens. We also think of decade as a ten-year type of block. After we get past the ten, there are prefixes for every single one of them. For example, the twelve-sided polygon is actually a dodecagon, but for our purposes, we also will see them just written as a 12-gon. The 15 does have a prefix. We are not going to worry about that, and the 20-sided is also simply, for our purposes, going to be called a 20-gon. If you certainly want to learn all those prefixes, go right ahead. You can Google them and find a whole bunch of them. They do all have a prefix that goes with it. Also remind ourselves that the degrees in a triangle is 180 degrees no matter what we have for the look of the triangle, no matter what type of triangle. And also for the quadrilateral, every quadrilateral, every four-sided polygon is 360 degrees no matter what it looks like, no matter what we classify it. If it's a four-sided polygon, then it would be a quadrilateral. Next, we have an extremely important formula. This formula helps us find the total number of degrees in each polygon. Each polygon has a different number of degrees in it, and this formula will help us find the total number of degrees in any polygon that we want to find. So here's how it goes. S, which is the sum of all of the angles, meaning if you added them all up, is equal to N minus 2 times 180 degrees. So what does that all mean? The S stands for the sum of all of the interior angles. And the N stands for the number of sides in the polygon. With this information, we can then find out how many angles, uh, degrees, are in each of the polygons. Once we know the sides, we can find the total number of degrees. So looking at this question, example number one, we want to know how many degrees are in an octagon. Well, octa means eight. So this is an eight-sided or eight angles polygon. So we use our formula, S. The N is the number of sides, which is an eight. We just literally fill in what we know. Now I'm going to use my order of operations. Eight minus two is the six. And lastly, we need to multiply that together. So the S, or the sum of all the interior angles, is 1,080 degrees. So that means that every octagon has 1,080 degrees, no matter how it looks. If we classify it as an eight-sided polygon, there is 1,080 degrees. Next, I'm going to do number two. Um, I would like you to try it and then we will do this one together. So I'm going to pause it, or you can pause it for a moment, and then try it. 
Well, first what we need to know is that the number of sides is 5, so that would be this is a pentagon. And then I can use my formula again to help be able to solve this. So S equals 5 sides minus 2 times the 180. 5 minus 2 is 3. And again, times 180. So the pentagon, no matter what it looks like, no matter what type of a pentagon it is, is going to always have 540 degrees. Here is where we're going to be able to do some more problem solving. And these types of problems take a little bit of extra work. So what you're going to have to do first when you look at this letter A is to determine the missing angle is to know how many degrees are supposed to be in this shape. So our very first step is to find the number of degrees. Well, if I count all these sides, I actually have a heptagon. So my first step is to say, what are the number of degrees in a heptagon? I know it's seven-sided. I can plug in my formula. I get 5 times 180, which leaves me with 900 degrees in the heptagon. So with this information, I can then add up the angles that are in the shape already and find the missing x from there. So I basically created my equation to help me figure out the missing value. Well, all those numbers that are just plain constants, I can add together. And so far, that means I have 778. Can't add them to the x. But now I have a simple one-step equation. If I subtract 778 from both sides, I know that x is going to equal 122 degrees. Now you try this next one, and I'll give you a starting point is if I look at my polygon, this time we have a six-sided shape, which is the hexagon. So use that information and find the missing angle. So first we need to find the total number of degrees in this six-sided polygon or the hexagon. And if I use my sum formula, I would get 6 minus 2 is the 4. 4 times 180 is 720 degrees. So I can now build my equation with the idea that a hexagon has 720 degrees. So there's my equation. The key thing on these types is to make sure that you've accounted for all these. So I should have six angles that I've added together to make the 90, 900, as well as the eight on the previous one. I'm sorry, the seven on the previous one. So I do have six angles here. So if I just added those together, I have 615 so far, plus the x equals 900. So here I have all of my angles added together to equal the 720, and I've created my equation. Again, I can add together the numbers or the constants to get 615 plus the x equals 720. Subtract 615 from both sides to give me my missing x, which is x equals 105 degrees. The key thing is to make sure I have the correct number of angles in my equation and I don't forget one. Next we have a really important vocabulary here. A regular polygon has all angles and all sides congruent. It's key that we understand and and that must have both of those things true. A regular polygon is a very specific vocabulary word. What it is telling us is information about the angles on the inside and also about the sides. In this section, we're more concerned about the angles on the inside. But what the regular polygon is telling me is that all of the angles are congruent. So here's a few of our common ones. The regular triangle, we actually have two names that we could call this. It can be referred to as the equilateral. Equi means equal, lateral means sides. We also refer to it sometimes as the equiangular triangle. Again, equal for equi, angular means equal angles. The regular quadrilateral, 
hopefully we are good with the idea that that is a square. And the regular pentagon, well, really it is just a regular pentagon. No fancy name for it, just the regular pentagon, meaning all sides are the same and all angles are the same. So where this regular helps us is the following question, for example, too. A regular decagon is very specific in helping us find the measure of each angle. So they want us to find the angles, and without a picture, some of us might not know what to do with that. We also know that we have a decagon, which is also very specific. It is ten sides. So my first step is I'm going to use my sum of angles formula to say we have a ten-sided shape and we want to know how many degrees are in that shape. Well, 10 minus 2 is 180. And 8 times 180 is 1,440 degrees. Well, if I know that this shape is regular, and that is the key, then I know that all of these angles, and there are 10 angles, are congruent. So if I take 1,440 and divide it by 10, that would tell me that every angle in a regular decagon is 144 degrees. The last thing we're going to talk about today is the exterior angle measures of a polygon. In the previous section, we talked about exterior angles with the triangles. Now we're going to talk about the exterior measures of a polygon. The sum of the exterior angles of a convex polygon is always 360 degrees. So looking at the picture to the right, if I was to write out my algebraic expression, I would basically take the angle of W, add it to the angle of X, add it to the angle of Y, add it to the angle Z, and it's always going to equal 360 degrees. So finding exterior angle measures. Well, using the information that we just discussed, I can create my formula with the exterior angles of this quadrilateral. So there's my equation. I've added the four angles, because a quadrilateral would have four exterior angles as well as four interior angles, and I get 360 degrees. If I combine my like terms, I have 268 plus x equals 360. Then, as my two-step, uh, one-step equation in this case, excuse me, I would subtract the 268 to mean that the x angle is going to be 92 degrees. Now, I want you to try the next one, so you can hit pause, try it, and when you're ready to come back, come back and see how you did. Okay, now the important thing to remember, and we've got to shift a little bit here, is even though we now have a three-sided polygon, the triangle, we are still going to add up to 360. So I have my equation, just adding my angles, and I'm going to get 360. So if I put together the z's, and I put together the constants, I'm going to get 150. I would follow through by subtracting 150. So 2z equals 210. We would divide by 2. Z equals 105 degrees. Lastly, we just have another one to try. This would be one that we just want to make sure we pay close attention to the box. Remember, the box means it's a right angle. Again, we now have a five-sided polygon, the pentagon. But again, we are still going to create our equation that equals 360 degrees. If we then look at our equation, we have three right angles. We have two x angles. I can combine the x like terms. I can also combine the 90s because they are constants or plain numbers to get 270. And again, that all equals a 360. I now have my two-step equation, so I'm going to subtract 270 to get 90 is 2x divided by 2 x equals 45 degrees. So while there's a lot going on in this section, I think it is something that you can do well. Please pay attention to the sum angles formula. Also pay attention to the regular polygon, and I think you will be successful.